showtime. Ladies and gentlemen, please make your way to your seats. Showtime. Please make your way to your seats. The show is about to begin. Showtime. Let the magic begin. Yeah. 3D nanoscale optical disc memory with petabit capacity. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know, like um, hard media storage is still a thing. And uh, it's still uh, like p- tape backups are still used today. Um, for those that don't know, a DVD is a little round disc that you use to play. Um, uh, you can play movies on. You can store data, different things like that. Um, I know we're getting away from 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 media storage, but this is cool because uh, again, re- this is another one. Researchers in China, they've developed a revolutionary 3D nanoscale optical disc memory with a staggering petabit capacity to put that into uh into just for those of you that understand dvds you could potentially store 125 terabits of data on one disc which is the equivalent of 15,000 dvds one disc can store 15,000 dvds the key to this is in the innovation the innovative use of and this is a long word but uh, aggregation induced emission dye doped photoresist, A I E D D P R. Uh, and that's the recording medium. So the material exhibits unique properties that allow for ultra high density storage through a process called volumetric nanoscale optical data storage. Again, big words, a lot of a lot of things. But essentially what it is is what they're doing is they're leveraging femtosecond laser beams and a deactivating beam. So the researchers can perce- can precisely write and read data at the nanoscale level, which is breaking through the diffraction limit barrier that was traditionally constrained for optical storage density. So what the writing process relies on is two photon absorption and uh, polymerization inhibition, which enables the creation of recording spots with sub-diffraction limited dimensions. So Essentially, all that means is that they're able, so just so that people know, DVDs are limited to one or two layers max. This is called 3D nanoscale optical disc because they can write to multiple, multiple layers, hundreds of layers. So um, the key to the to, to this is, is that. So talking about all that is their ability to store data in hundreds of layers within the film. And the A, AIE... DDPR is the film that they're that they're the each layer. So it extends the recording architecture from planar, which is flat, to three dimensional, which it, it's it's more than three dimensions, obviously, because we're talking hundreds of layers. But it is three dimensional because you're storing it multiple different um, uh, vertic- vertices, if that makes sense. So they did demonstrate successful recording and readout of data on a hundred layers with a layer to layer distance of just one micrometer, which is crazy. So the potential is truly remarkable. They can stack multiple nanoscale disks onto arrays. They can like, you can, the it's endless. So um, obviously further improvements are going to be needed for reading or for writing speed and efficiency. I remember back in the day when they first released writable cds and writable dvds it would take hours to write and i'm sure um this takes just as long if not longer but we're talking a lot of data so um and again we're talking with um very expensive equipment as well yeah this looks amazing i was highlighting some of the articles on the side as we kind of went through it where like these are articles referred to in the other article and this one is a hundred layer error free 5D optical storage by ultra fast laser nano obstruction in glass. And this is interesting when you're talking about how many layers, uh, you know, people maybe at, at a consumer level don't really understand how much uh, hard drives and data centers um, and spaces used in optical storage. We used to have, you know, towers and towers of storage area networks that would replicate across sites and sites to do all this stuff. Um, and then you've got near online, you got online, near online and offline storage for backups and stuff. Where does this fit in that tree of 
it, would this be online or be near online? Meaning, you know, it takes a little longer to access when you store stuff this in a, you know, uh, some sort of array, or would this be high speed access? So I, right now, definitely not high speed access. Like we're not talking about like, like Ram speed or even, or even, um, even hard disk speed. I don't think, um, I think this right now would be more for say backup kind of technology. So, um, again, because it's got a lot of storage, um, it's, it, and think about it like this, like DVDs and Blu-ray discs, they were never used for, for, uh, real time, but you never know with the technology. I don't know much about the, the laser that they're using. I don't know much about too much more about the, the film, um, other than what's in the article, but it could it, it, essentially this is more for data archiving rather than like reading and writing in in live. If that yeah, and I'm yeah, I'm followed the article down and I'm highlighting some stuff that uh, supports what you're talking about as you're talking. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. What are some of these potential uh, applications of these 3D nanoscale optical disk memory technologies? I take a step back yeah. and say, great. I mean, yeah. I, as a person who I've built multiple server room data rooms in, understand this. I built them yeah. for Mercer. I built them for Deloitte. I built them for yeah. large corporations. But um, what's the potential application outside of pay a server room for this type of thing? Yeah. So... Just so you guys know, and, and don't ask me how I know this, um, but a, a HDR 4K um, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos file, um, I think is, is like uncompressed, is like hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes. Um, and so this could enable more um, uncompressed, because you know when you compress... Uh, a video file, you lose some of the quality. So this could potentially enable um, full quality, uncompressed kind of, uh, that's just one that came off the top of my head. But uh, the other thing is too, data centers and cloud storage. So with vol like we're talking tons of data in these generated by businesses, scientific research, consumer applications. Um, the, the data centers themselves, and you know this, are grappling with the challenge of storing and managing vast amounts of information. So this technology could revolutionize data center architectures, enabling more efficient, cost-effective, and long-term archival storage solutions. So again, a lot of this is more kind of storage. So um, scientific research and supercomputing. So the ability to store and access huge data sets efficiently is crucial for advancing research. So it could enable more comprehensive data storage and analysis capabilities for supercomputers. Um, if we're talking, if we want to talk about aerospace and defense, they often have to deal with large volumes of sensitive data, including satellite imagery, surveillance footage, things like that. So the high storage density and potential for secure data encryption could make this technology valuable um, for storage in, in space and things like that. Even personal data storage and backups. Like imagine, <laughs> well, I guess I, I only have about 20 terabytes worth of data, but um, like... Imagine just having unlimited, like you, you have one disc that can store your whole life, your whole family's life, even more, and then some. Yeah, and it's talking about lifetime storage, unlimited lifetime storage at room temperature, which has always been a concern um, for a lot of the mediums, especially from a demagnetization point of view after a number of years. Do yeah. they re like, it, you know, is this really a lifetime storage or is it just a... Um, word they use to say it's longer than what we're using today well it, there is a potential because of what because of the medium they're using and and everything like that so first off chemical stability so the film that used the aie ddpr um as the record it's a polymer based material and it exhibits excellent chemical stability so unlike magnetic or optical media which is dvds and hard drives they can degrade over time due to oxidization or corrosion the cured film in this AIE, AIE DDPR, it's highly resistant to chemical reactions that could compromise the integrity of the recorded data. Um, the other thing is thermal stability. So they conducted extensive temperature stress testing on the recorded disks, exposing them to temperatures as high as 130 degrees Celsius. And for those Americans, 266 degrees Fahrenheit. 
uh, for prolonged periods and the results showed minimal degradation. So um, really cool. Environmental stability, again, we're talking physical robustness. So the optical discs are generally more resistant to physical damage compared to magnetic tapes or hard drives. Um, so the film's solid state nature and encapsulation within the protective casing that further enhances its, its physical robustness. So it's really, really cool. So do they talk about performance? I'm trying to find in a few of these articles because they're all kept referring to other articles doing different yeah. similar things. Um, what is the performance from... Um, it's great that we can store a massive amount of data. And as we move into quantum computers and AI and training these things, you know, we're talking about literally warehouses full of racks and racks and racks yeah. of hard drives. Yeah. Um, this this potentially could shrink that significantly but what's the performance that uh yeah again i don't know so I, the current process used in 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 the the scanning femtosecond laser beams to record data spot by spot is time consuming right now obviously because it's newer technology right and um so that's going to be a big thing that they're going to have to um and this is just um this is just um, based on, on on the article, so um, the, uh, the, the, they don't get into specific um, uh, performance, and makes sense because we're still at that that early stage, right? Um, and I, yeah, I'm not sure based on the article, the 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 readout speed um, and data rates were not addressed in the published work. So I'm guessing it's really slow, <laughs> like slower than we would expect. Yeah. It says here, um, but the drawback is relatively low writing speed of 0.2 <laughs> kilobits, kilobits per, second. per second, minus one, whatever the minus one Ooh. means in that particular, um, yeah. the power of, uh, so yeah. that's why I was curious. I saw a reference to that um nine times higher 43 times higher recording speed so they're they've done some stuff to get it up but i'm curious because and i'm also it's fun that they use the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy as a test for all of this <laughs> they, were, they did a, uh, multiple recordings of audio recording i guess of the hitchhiker's yeah. galaxy to <laughs> um so it's very interesting the cool that it stays that long um a corresponding data capacity of 350 gig per 120 millimeter disc and data writing speed of 8k per second um yeah so it's going to be slow at least now but what of what a magnet might... sorry go, go ahead, ahead. what so... i think they might do is is um start with a lower capacity disc that has higher write higher read and write with a with a different um laser and then upgrade until they get to that to that max capacity, which I think is what they did with DVDs. Yeah, I can't remember. Bio. So, how soon is this? It always comes down to how quickly we're going to see this in a like a say. Let's just say high end data centers. Um, I'm guessing ten years. And you probably said this, but as I was researching it, I'm trying to figure out. Um, you probably didn't say it in the way I want, want to hear it, which is, okay, we can fit, you know, uh, several hundred hard drives in a standard rack right now in an array yeah. in the storage area network. Um, side by side, one of these, how much more storage can you do in the same yeah. type of thing? Is it 10 times, 1,000 times? So DVDs with a single layer are 4.7 gigs. If they're dual layer, they're 8.5. Blu-ray, single layer is 25 gigs. Dual layer is 50 gigs. And the this 3D nanoscale optical disc is 125,000 gigabytes. So one CD size disc is how big again? No, one D one oh yeah, one one DVD size disc, which uh, is 125,000 gigabytes. The Blu-ray is 50 gigabytes. <laughs> 125,000 gigabytes. Okay, so 125,000. So it's short of a terabyte. Yeah. Okay. Well, way short of a terabyte. To, yeah, I'm just trying to get it in my thing. And that 
we would multi-layer these disks and say have yes. some sort of um, hard drive unit? No, like it's gonna... it's no no. It's all in one disk. So it's a thicker disk that has multiple layers within that one disk. Okay, so so one disk could hold petabytes. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. So we can hold that is um, that hundred twenty five thousand gigabyte is per layer. Yes. Okay. So yeah, I'm just comparing it to, to the single layer Blu-ray. So single layer Blu-ray is 25 gigs. Single layer DVD was 4.7 gigs, and single layer 3D is 125,000 gigs. And so you can do a hundred of those in what we're going to say is, as a again a DVD size disc, maybe yeah. a little thicker, <laughs> yeah. just so you could put whatever you need between the layers to make sure it's discernible. So now you're talking petabytes on one of those. And yeah. so you're talking about, I don't even know, uh, is it exactabytes beyond petabytes? I can't remember what the... Uh, yeah, I think it's exactabytes. So we're really talking about taking storage to a huge new space. Yeah. So yeah, when we we're, talk we're about... Exponential here. So when we talk about quantum computers... Um, Mm -hmm. analyzing the state between zero and one being infinite number of possibilities between zero and one versus, you know, common computers, which is just zero or one. Having this kind of storage really makes a difference because, you know, that zero and one is not one thing anymore. It's an infinite possibility of things. Yeah. And when you say, all right, we want to use quantum computers to solve these huge world problems, you're talking about calculating every possible possibility and putting all that together and figuring that out. So, and feeding yeah, these, can, and feeding yeah. these AI machines. Um, yeah, and that data can be stored on these disks, which is awesome. So, naturally, what happens with this? This has happened with DVDs and whatnot. We can get more storage. Then they eventually apply this similar technology or idea to. Uh, hard drives or um, solid state technology. Do you see this being able to leap no. into? No, no, because if you think about like DVDs and CDs, it's the same kind of based on based on my understanding. It's the same type of storage medium kind of thing. It's just a different material and different laser. So I, I no, I think this is more for archival um, and retrieval kind of thing more because I don't think you can do multiple read and writes to this. I think it's one. Well, unless, yeah, maybe you could, but um, unless it's a newer technology then it, which it is, but unless it's a technology that can handle multiple reads or multiple erases, then um, I think we're talking more like a read. Like, Cause I know there was rewritable. Like DVDs. a worm drive. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this feels more based on everything I've read. It feels more like a worm drive than anything else. Yeah. Um, which is interesting because now we say, all right, um, now we get back to a blockchain immutable ledger kind of storage format because it can't potentially can't be changed once we record it. And it becomes um, an interesting other piece that you can deal with, right? Yeah. Like from a, all right, this is immutable storage. If we want this as a corporation or as whatever, so that people can come here and see everything that's ever happened, transactional lines on every email that's been sent or whatever, this is yeah. great technology for that. However, yeah, long-term storage. Yeah. Yeah. However, most corporations aren't doing that kind of stuff for legal reasons anymore. They're flushing this stuff as quickly as they possibly can. Yeah. Um, you only keep six yeah. months a day, whatever they're legally required from an email point of view. Otherwise it's gone. Yeah. Um, because, you know, any discovery means that any random employee could sink you because <laughs> they emailed some stupid thing about somebody. It's like, yeah. ah, man. Um, yeah. So this is this is really cool. I love what this is going, but it really isn't going to be. This is your uh, mostly offline storage. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And but the possibilities are endless. And, you know, I got a 12, uh, eight terabyte. Uh, drive here at home that I used to back up and I'm thinking about I'll get a new one this year um, but these these things are at a whole new level yeah so what do you got going on John well nothing just uh just March Madness brackets uh, NCAA college basketball tournament coming up next week so non-tech for those there's uh 
There's a link there. But uh, if you have any questions or you want to join the pool, pick your bracket. You got a better chance of winning Powerball than picking a perfect bracket. But uh, try your luck. And uh, yeah, um, other than that, nothing coming up in the next couple of weeks except for uh, startup drinks. Yeah, Startup Investor Drinks, uh, CIX After Party on March 27th will be a good event. So grab your tickets there. We've got the swag bags in. They look good. Thanks for joining us. We've got a lot of people watching us on Twitter today. Give us a like, retweet, whatever uh, comment that is really appreciated. It costs you nothing and helps us out a lot. Check out more stuff, uh, what we do at torontostarts.com. You can get the podcast there and whatnot. And if you're stuck in your business and you want to move it forward and you're looking for help, check out startupcoach.ca. I help businesses get unstuck and grow to the next level. Book a free discovery call and we can chat. Um, thanks very thanks, much, guys. Sean, for being here. I rushed through that so to get you out the door. Nice. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Craig. Take care. Bye. Wow, that was-